This is our criminal justice first year academic advising to help you in walking through the classes that you're currently registered for, what changes you might want to make to your schedule, and then um, understanding kind of the, the overall scope of the classes that you're going to be taking while you're here at Plattsburgh. So let me go back to that shared screen. And if I can make it work, which is always the key. All right, so this is basically what we're gonna be working through today. Um, a little bit about our program, a little bit about the overall um, four years of education that you're going to be going through at Plattsburgh, and then specifically what you're going to be doing in the fall. So you've all signed up to be criminal justice majors here at SUNY Plattsburgh. And I know that some of you went really deep into the program and you examined the different programs that were available and you have a very strong understanding of, of what makes SUNY Plattsburgh special. And then some of you thought, hey, that's really close to the mountains. That's really cool. Um, I know my own daughter chose her school because it's next to a giant lake. That's, we're next to a lake as well, but she chose to go elsewhere. Um, in any event, let me tell you a little bit about our criminal justice program. The emphasis that we have here at Plattsburgh is educating criminal justice professionals that are going to be in their community. A lot of the criminal justice programs are focused on training people how to be criminal justice professionals, training them directly to be a lawyer, training them directly to be a police officer. We have a very social science-based program, which means that we are focused on people understanding how the criminal justice professions interact with the community, how the society creates laws, why the society creates laws, how those laws are enforced, when the laws are enforced, how does that affect different areas of the community. Everything that we study is about how do societies create crime and create criminals and how do they prevent crime and prevent criminals. It's not about the day-to-day nitty-gritty of here's how to, I don't know, collect evidence, here's how to write a brief. It's about how did this society form in such a way that criminals exist. And what that means is that no matter what field you end up in, if you end up being a law enforcement, law enforcement officer, if you end up being a corrections officer, if you end up being a lawyer, you've got a really broad and deep understanding of the entire criminal justice system and where your role comes from, how you serve the community, how you can shape the community to make it a better place. Um, it, it's a, an understanding of the whole system that sets you up not only to get your first job, but to be prepared for promotion in the future as well. You don't just have the entry level skills, you've got the developed skills that you need to be able to really get ahead in your career. So what you see when you're taking criminal justice courses are the, the four elements that are down here at, at the bottom of your screen. What you're going to be taking in the fall semester and for your first year are introductory courses. Um, introduction to criminal justice, criminology, basic criminal law. They're the entry level courses that you need to get into a more advanced education about criminal justice. Then you'll be taking broad courses in the three areas of criminal justice. And this is something that you probably already know. Criminal justice is divided into three main areas, policing, courts, and corrections. And we've got foundational courses in each of those areas. Then our courses are broken up into these different thematic areas of criminal justice that you can see listed there, dealing with social justice, law, politics and justice, transnational law and international justice, and crime and deviance. And these give you a, a breadth of understanding of the different ways that professionals approach the criminal justice system. 
And then finally, there are the more intense courses that you're going to be taking in your junior and senior years that are how do you do criminal justice research? What do you do with all this theory that you've learned now that you know how criminal justice, criminal justice professionals interact with society? What do you do with that? How do you develop research? How do you understand research? And one of the very last class classes that you will take is called Ethics in Criminal Justice. And just given the events of the last, last few weeks, I think we can all understand that having an ethical understanding of criminal justice, what is the role of criminal justice professionals, how can they abuse their power, how can they um, use their power in a respect, responsible and respectful way. It's really important for, for our students to understand. And so that, that's one of the capstone courses that you'll be taking. So that's a really broad overview. You'll be doing these classes over the course of four years. So don't think you're gonna take all of these in the next semester. So as I said, you're gonna be taking four years worth of courses. That adds up to 120 credits and you figure that it's three credits per course, what does that come up to? Math people, that's like 40 classes that you're going to be taking. That's a lot. That, that's a lot of education that you're going to be gaining over the next four years. And when you're at the start of it, like you are, it can be really overwhelming. So we've given you this smorgasbord of thousands of classes that we offer at SUNY Plattsburgh and said, go take the right 40 courses. Um, it's really hard to make those choices. So we've been able to give you some guidance. And the main guidance that you're going to get comes from your academic advisor. Everybody in the criminal justice department is, and everybody on campus, to be honest, is, is assigned to a specific advisor that takes care of them through the entire four years. It's connected to your major. So if for some reason you decide to leave criminal justice, you will also be going to a different academic advisor. These academic advisors meet with you regularly. You're required to meet with them at least once a semester to choose your classes for the following semester. But you can also meet with those, person, those people anytime that you have an issue. If you've got a problem with your roommate, if you've got a problem with a professor, if you're just not quite sure how to manage your workload, your academic advisor is your first point of contact. You go to them, you say, I'm having this issue. And they either say, here's how to fix this issue, go do this. Or they say, I don't know how to fix that, but here's the person on campus who knows. So that academic advisor is somebody that you just want to get to know. You're going to drop in on them on, in the first month or so that you're on campus and then meet up with them regularly. Those advisors are then the people that help you choose those 40 classes that you're going to take over the course of four years. Now, if you've been digging through Plattsburgh's catalog and you, you're paying attention to the criminal justice program, then you know that our criminal justice program is only about 40 credits. Um, that's a lie. I think it's 50. It's between 40 and 50 credits. Um, it doesn't fill up all of your 120 credits. And so you can see um, what I've got on the screen here that your major program is really only one part of the curriculum. As I said, it fills about 50 credits um, of your curriculum. You also have to take general education courses. Um, all too often on campus, people talk about gen ed as, oh, something you've got to get out of the way. It's this weird requirement we have to do. I, why do I have to take this class? Well, let me tell you. You're training to be a criminal justice professional, which means that you need to have an understanding of the society that you are living in, the society that you are policing or the society that you are overseeing in some way, that you're protecting. And the general education courses are designed to help you gain an understanding of that society, and in particular, to learn about people and things that aren't really like you, or that aren't things you would necessarily be interested in, but that are really important to other people. And so it's in general education that you get a passing understanding of science, being able to have a, a conversation with somebody else about the Big Bang or about chemistry, you know, 
lots of chemicals in law enforcement, having some understanding of how that science works is important. Having some historical background of where the society came from and how it changes. Having some understanding of the arts. All of this helps you to get a grasp on what the society is and how that then interacts with you in your adult roles. So the general education is really foundational to understanding what the community is, how the community works, what people are like. So when someone says to you, oh, it's just a gen ed credit that you have to take, don't listen to them. It's, it's really important. It gives you a chance to explore other parts of the world that maybe you wouldn't have, wouldn't have had an interest in otherwise. So general education is about 30 credits. So if you're keeping track, your major is 50 credits, general education is 30 credits. We're still only up to 80 credits. So there's another 40 credits that you have to do something with. And that's where the fun really begins because those credits, you've got to take them. You've got to get to 120 credits, but those last 40 credits are for you to choose what you want to do with them. And if you want to just do random electives, you can do that. If you want to take every single criminal justice course that we offer, you can do that. And people have done that. You can also take a minor. A lot of people minor in sociology because they're really interested in the criminology side of criminal justice. Sociology helps in understanding criminology. A lot of people take a psychology minor because they want to do some kind of forensics or counseling and they want to um, have a better understanding of how the human brain works and so they take psychology. People that are interested in the law very often take a political science minor. And then people take all kinds of minors just because they're interesting. They take computer security, they take history, they take archaeology. They, you know, we have lots and lots of minors to choose from. And I would say we probably have a, a student in every single one of them. Um, you can also choose to double major. Um, you've got enough credits that you can double major in political science or psychology or whatever other program you're interested in. So this first semester, you don't really have to worry about your minor, you don't have to worry about a second major, but in another year or two, you're going to want to be thinking about what to do with those extra credits. And if you decide to just randomly take course courses, that's perfectly fine. This is the only time in your life that you're gonna be able to study anything that you want to. And I, I firmly believe that if you see a class in the catalog that you're interested in, you should be able to take it. Don't say, oh, it doesn't satisfy any requirement. I can't do it. No, just if it looks interesting, take it. That's what you're here for. It's the only chance you're going to get to study whatever you want to. Even with this, okay, knowing that there is this, this broad outline of, of what you have to take, it's still pretty daunting. You still have to choose those 40 classes. And even for this coming semester, you need to have five classes and figuring out the right ones. There's a tool that the college gives us that lets you see very clearly what your requirements are and how you are going about fulfilling them. And that's called the Degree Works Audit. I think this is a video. <laughs> now, what I don't know is what you have been sent in terms of registration information, um, what you have in your packet. Um, when you go on to the Plattsburgh page, you access something called the portal, the My Plattsburgh portal. And at the top of the portal, there's a whole line of icons. And the icon that you're looking for is this one right here, which turns out to be little gears and a mortar board. Until I blew it up, I couldn't tell what it was. It's a little tiny icon, but you'll see that mortar board. That's your degree works tool. And when you click that little mortar board, you're going to get something that looks like what, um, what I have on the screen here. Now I'm going to play this little video and it just scrolls down the entire audit. This is an actual real freshman's um, audit. I've just um, cut off their, um, th their, their information at the top. Um, so this is a real person, but you don't know who it is. Um, so I'm going to scroll through the whole thing and then we'll go through it piece by piece and talk about what you need to be concerned about.
so let's, as I said, I wanted you to see that just because it is a long scroll that you'll be able to pull through. And I know Elizabeth in the chat just sent information about when you will get the links for this. So assuming I can make this work. Okay. At the top of Degree Works is, I didn't want to play it again. I wanted to move to the next one. There we go. All right. At the top of the Degree Works is the general overall information. And you can see that this person is an incoming freshman. Um, they have no credits fulfilled yet. And so there are a lot of empty check boxes. Everything that you're going to look at in Degree Works has a checkbox, and it's either an open red checkbox, which means you have not satisfied your requirement, or it is a green checkbox, which means, means that you have satisfied the requirement, um, or it's a blue checkbox with a squiggle, which means you're in the process of satisfying your requirements. And you will see that in a couple of minutes in a different slide. So at the top here, these are all of the requirements that everybody has to satisfy for their, their bachelor's degree. They are all overlapping. So you do not have to take 120 total credits plus 90 liberal arts credits plus 45 um, upper level credits. Your 120 total has to include 90 liberal arts credits, 45 upper level credits, 25 upper level credits in residence, all of those things are wrapped up in the 120. That's something you're not going to worry about until you're a junior or a senior to just make sure most students will automatically satisfy those requirements by satisfying all of the other requirements. That's just kind of a last minute double check. Um, at the lower part of this screen, is um, the, the major parts of your program. So as I was talking about, your major requirements, when those are satisfied, this will be checked off. When your general education is satisfied, these will be checked off. As soon as you have a GPA, it will show, yes, your GPA is above 2.0. And this is an area that often confuses students, the placement proficiency results. Many of you have taken your English placement already, and it tells you you have to take English 100 or English 101. If you have not done the English placement already, it says there either take English placement or take English 100. Your math proficiency is probably based on your high school or your SAT scores. You don't necessarily take a math test, um, and you'll see a requirement there. Um, you might have a foreign language proficiency there, depending on what you did in high school. There are some other things that might appear, um, might appear there. In general, those are also things you don't have to worry about for the fall. You might want to be concerned about them um, starting in the spring or in your sophomore year. The next section is the general education section. And here, what you're seeing here is that this person has already been pre-registered. This is something that my office did. We put together schedules and put students into them. And so I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Everything that is in blue is a class that the student is currently registered for. That's, that's this in progress notation. The rest of these are classes that the student has to take. Over on the left-hand side here, these are the categories, the math category, the oral expression category. On the right-hand side are the classes that fulfill that category. When you're looking at this live, when you're looking at your own degree works, you can click each of these little numbers and it will tell you what is the class, when is it being offered. These categories that are listed in um, Upper, they're all uppercase, American history or Western Civ, world systems or foreign language. In those areas, you only need to do one of the two, cat, the two categories that are below it. So you choose either foreign language or world systems. You have to satisfy 30 credits total of general education, plus these Plattsburgh special gen ed courses at the bottom. 
Um, the library course is info and tech, tech and literacy, and then the global issues category. The criminal justice major, this is I know what you're excited about. Um, all of you have been pre-registered already in Introduction to Criminal Justice. Next semester, you'll begin taking these other classes. As I said at the beginning, we have both the introductory courses and then more advanced courses. When you're looking at the degree works, you'll take the introductory courses first, which makes sense. You'll, you'll take intro to criminal justice, criminology, criminal law, but then you skip down and begin doing these areas in criminal justice classes and then come back to the other classes a little bit later. So that's where you really want to talk to your academic advisor, because if you just try to go straight down this list, you're going to find yourself in classes that are far too advanced for you too early. So you, you do the beginning, then you do some of the breadth courses, and then you come back to finish your core classes. Down here are the cognate requirements. Cognate just means a required class that's in a different department. We require our students to know something about sociology, something about political science, something about psychology, and so everyone is required to take the introductory classes in those areas. Those are called cognates. Um, so they're a part of your major requirements, but they are not taught by criminal justice. And then lastly at the bottom are your in-progress classes. This is what you are pre-registered for. You will get more information next week as you're getting some of the links that help you with registration. So let's talk about what you are registered for in the fall. Um, we have approximately 60 new students coming in and they have all been pre-registered. What that means is that I didn't look really super closely at your personal situation and put you into exactly the right classes that are right for you. Instead, we built some schedules that worked that were really nice and then we put students into them. That means that your schedule might not be right for you. So what I'm gonna talk about is what to do if it's not right for you, what you have to stay in, what you can change if you want to. The classes that you're in for your criminal justice major are Criminal Justice 150, which is Introduction to Criminal Justice, and Sociology 101. Those two classes are the prerequisites for everything else in the department. So if you drop those classes this semester, you're going to have to take them next semester and you're not going to be able to take any other criminal justice classes until you finish those. So don't change those classes, stay in them. If you have to change your section, there are different sections of Criminal Justice 150, you can change that. There are different sections of Social 101, you can change that. I wouldn't. I would just stay in the classes that we've put you in unless there's something something really problematic like a conflict with an athletic schedule or something like that. The other two classes that you're in are general education classes and those we put in because they're general education classes, they get you seats, they meet requirements that you have but you might look at them and say, oh, I hate Canada. I can't believe I'm gonna take a Canadian studies class. I'm not gonna force you to take Canadian studies. You can choose something different in that same gen ed area or another gen ed area. A reason to stay in the classes we picked is we tried really hard to get schedules that work in terms of the time and day that they're offered. They're really nicely balanced in terms of during the week. You don't have one class first thing in the morning and one class really late at night. So they're balanced in that way. We also paid attention to the location so that you're not running across campus between classes. But to be honest, those aren't the most important things in choosing classes. So if you look at classes and you say, I just can't stand these, um, you, you certainly can change your general education classes. And finally, some of you have been registered in an English composition class. The only people who got put into English composition are the people who have already done their, their placement test for English so that we knew which class to put you into. Um, 
once you have done your English placement, if you need some advice or suggestions about which section to register for, um, I'm happy to give that to you. We've, we've chosen sections that work well with each schedule, um, but we just have not put you into them. So that's something that, that you might be in or you might not be in, but you should probably look at taking in, um, in the fall if you can. So, why should you change your classes or in which cases should you change your classes? If you have taken any pre-college credits that you think you're repeating, so you did AP Psychology but you don't have a grade for it yet and we have you registered in Psych 101, don't retake the class, all right? So if you've got history credit, if you've got math credit, if you've got any kind of credit coming in and you see that you're registered for a class that you think you've already taken, just drop the class that, that you're currently registered for. If it turns out, I don't know, you got a two on your AP test and you actually have to take the class, we can take it another semester. So don't repeat credit. Secondly, you might want to add a class if you already know what your second major is going to be or what your minor is going to be and you're really anxious to get started in it. So again, if you want to be a psychology major as well and you're not registered for Psych 101, you might want to add Psych 101 just because you're excited about, about the program and you want to get started in it. If you don't have any other thoughts about what to do for your fifth class, I would take either your English class or your math class. Those are both classes that are really foundational to success in college, making sure that you've got a really good grasp of how numbers work, making sure you've got a good grasp of the English language. That's super important. So, so I would recommend making that fifth class an English class or a math class, um, unless you've got something else you want to do with that. Um, I've been talking about five classes because you should plan on taking 15 credits per semester and that gets you out in four years. 15 times 8 equals 120. You can take 18 credits. Uh, you technically can take 12, but I don't recommend it. Start with five classes. That's 15 credits. Maybe add a one credit class on there and do 16 credits. Um, this is only your first semester. Take it a little bit easy. Go for that 15 or 16. All right, so that's all the um, official criminal justice related curriculum stuff that, um, that I need to tell you. Um, this last slide is about stuff I have learned being a college professor for 20 years. Um, this first semester is a hard one for students. Um, a lot of you are away from home for the first time. You're learning how to manage your own time. Um, you're learning what it takes to be in college. It's a really different experience than high school. And that's not the time to um, embark on big life-changing experiences. Um, now, maybe it is. When I went to college, I said, I'm a vegetarian now. I'm just changed my life and I'm not anymore, but it was like, oh yeah, I can make these big personal changes. But don't think, I've always hated math, but now I can take math and succeed. If you have issues with math, your first semester is not the time to make sure you're going to take that really hard math class. Um, if you've always hated, um, I don't know, history, it's probably not the right semester to take a class that you know that you're going to hate. You're really trying to set yourself up for a class and a schedule where you're going to be happy and successful. So take classes that look appealing. Um, be realistic about your sleep habits. Um, if you had a hard time getting up for high school and that was with a parent um, throwing things at you to get you out of bed, don't sign up for eight o'clock classes because it's going to be really hard. If you go to bed early, don't sign up for night classes. So be realistic about what you can do and what you can change. I put physical fitness on here because for a very fit person, it takes about 11 minutes to get from one side of campus to the other. Um, you only have 10 minutes between classes. If you don't think you can do that consistently, don't sign up for classes that um, are at opposite ends of the campus. 
Okay, mix it up a little. That means don't take all classes that are all social sciences. Throw in a literature class, throw in an art class or a music class or a math class or a science class. Try to have a, a mix of things because your brain gets really tired when it does the same work over and over and over again. So you need to give it different kinds of work to do. Let it do some art for a while, let it do some science for a while, then come back and do your criminology. So try to get a mix of things in your schedule. Um, have something to look forward to. Take a class that you really, really want. Maybe you just think astronomy is the best thing ever and you're gonna take astronomy. Or maybe you love guitar. Take a beginner guitar class or a, an advanced guitar class. Have a class that you're really looking forward to, something that, that makes you happy that you're in college. And then finally, don't worry too much about it. As I said at the beginning, you're taking 40 classes over the course of, of your college experience this is the first five. There's so much room to experiment, to make mistakes, to try something out and decide, oh, that really wasn't right. The choices that you're making this semester, in one way they're really important because they're determining what your semester is like, your very first semester of college. But on the other hand, if you make a mistake, you can fix it. There's, there's lots and lots of time to make it better if you do something and realize, oh, that wasn't quite the right choice. Um, a lot of students get really anxious about choosing their classes, and you don't have to. Um, it'll be fine. It, you know, that, that's my, my final message. Um, it'll be fine. You'll be okay. Whatever choices you make, it will satisfy those 120 credits that you need. You will be making progress towards your degree. Nothing you do can make you screw up so bad that, that you're behind somehow. So, so feel feel a little more comfortable about what you're doing. That's what I have in terms of a presentation. I'm going to stop the sharing here and give you an opportunity to ask some questions, whether you've got questions you'd like to use your microphone or if you want to put them in the chat. I will try to do, manage both of those things. there will be a, a final chance to make adjustments um, at a session in July, and so you'll receive notification about that. But at this point, if you know your schedule does not work for you, get in touch with me and we'll try to, try to find something that will work. Alrighty then, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, when you all have your schedules in front of you and you're able to um, take a look, please do get in touch. If you need to adjust it, I will, I will do what I can. Uh, you got a lot of information here today, so if it doesn't make sense or if you forget about it, please feel free to get in touch with me. So we're all good. Thanks a lot for coming. I'm going to stop the recording and I will see you in August. <laughs>